you are welcome to iPlus Academy. Today we are going to be looking at one of the laws of gases and that is Gram's law of diffusion of gases. The law states that the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its vapor density. And in this video, I will be deriving all the formulas needed to solve questions on calculations on Gram's law of diffusion of gases. If you have any question, pause the video and go back to check so that you can really get 100% comprehension of this. Now, the law states that the rate of diffusion of a gas, the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional. We have some words that we are going to be making use there to the square root of its vapor density. Now, we can turn this to mathematics so that we can derive all the necessary formulas. So, mathematically now, mathematically, good. Now, it states that the rate of diffusion of a gas, that we have here, so rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely, this is variation now, proportional to the square root of vapor density. So let's use Vd as a vapor density of that gas. Now, the law of variation says anytime you have this sign of proportionality, what will you do? The same thing as imputing an equal to sign, then you have a constant over the square root of that vapor density. So in this case, I'm going to be having R, if you cross multiply, square root of VD equals to K. So this simply means that the rate of diffusion times the square root of the vapor density is a constant. That means we can have a gas in two states or we can have two or more gases and we're going to be looking at the rate of diffusion of the gas or of those gases. Now, let's quickly move on because we have K. We can quickly have it as the rate of diffusion of the first gas square root of the vapor density of the first gas because we have a constant equals to the rate of diffusion of the second gas then we have vapor density of the second gas. So this is my equation one. It is very, very valid. Now the second one, I can quickly do this so that it can be easily to be remembered. R1 over R2. What do you think that will be? It will be vapor density two for the second gas over vapor density 1 for the first gas. So this is my equation 2. Take note of all these things and put them to your memory. It will help you so much. Now, but rate of diffusion of a gas is usually equals to the volume of that gas over the time taken for the gas to diffuse. Therefore, we can substitute R into equation 2. So that we are going to be having what now? We're going to be having V1 for the first, first gas over the time taken divided by V2 over the second time taken. And we have square root of vapor density 2, remember, over square root of vapor density 1. I'm solving life from I plus Academy. Now, what do we do here now? We're going to be having V1 over T1 
If you change division sign to times, that becomes what? T2 over V2. I want to believe that we are following this. So we have vapor density 2 over vapor density 1. So this is a very good equation that has to do with having volume when the rate has not been given. So we have equation 3. Now let's move on from there. You will also note that what? The relative molecular mass is usually equal to 2 times vapor density. So where M subscript R is a relative molecular mass of a gas, which can be calculated when relative atomic mass is given. This simply means that what? Relative molecular mass varies directly as vapor density. That means they can be used interchangeably. Is that okay? Therefore, we cannot quickly say that equation 3 will be, can also be written as what? V1 over T1 times T2 over V2 equals square root of vapor density 2 all over square root of vapor density 1 equals to relative molecular mass 2 over what? Relative molecular mass 1. And this is equation 4. So this is very, very important. Equation 4. So we can move from here. Anytime the volumes of the gases are the same, so we can say at equal volume. So what you're going to notice here, at equal volume of the gases, at equal volume of the gases, it quickly means that V1 and V2 are the same. V1 equals to V2. So our equation will now therefore be T2. So V1 will cancel that over T1 equals to square root of vapor density 2 over square root of vapor density 1. And that will now be equals to relative molecular mass 2 all over relative molecular mass 1. And this is our equation 5 for the whole thing. So if you can go through all these derivatives very well, the way I've derived them one after the other, solving question in Graham's law will be as easy as anything. I would like you, if you are still new on this channel, I would like you to press the bell for notification of our previous videos and the one we are going to be doing. And I would like you to subscribe and uh, share all these things to people so that they will value what we are doing. Thank you for listening.